Many Americans today remember waking up early on Saturday mornings as kids, waiting anxiously for the regularly scheduled cartoons to flash onto television screens. Most recall this weekend ritual fondly. After all, it was a part of almost all Americans' childhoods. But where did this well-loved art form originate, and how did it become such an enormous part of American pop culture? The first person ever to film drawings frame by frame was J. Stuart Blackton, a British-born American newspaper cartoonist often referred to as the father of American animation. His wildly successful film, Humorous Phases of a Funny Face, though simplistic and almost silly to viewers today, astounded audiences across America when it was released in 1906. Five years later, animator Windsor McKay was successfully producing cartoons featuring characters with graceful movements and distinct personalities. His most famous film, Gertie the Dinosaur, was released in 1914. The short featured a tenacious dinosaur that McKay claimed to have trained to perform certain tricks. Same year, John Randolph Bray revolutionized animation production by suggesting studios hire larger staffs to work like production lines. Before cells, animators had to completely redraw the background and character for each of the thousands of different frames in each scene. After cells, however, animators only had to draw the background once, saving themselves time and effort. In 1915, American animation studios began to create cartoons that would regularly appear in films. The character Felix the Cat, for example, created in 1919 by cartoonist Pat Sullivan and animator Otto Messmer, turned into an entire series of cartoons. Felix, whose name was originally Master Tom, was based on the personality of Charlie Chaplin, a famous actor at the time. In fact, Felix's star power exceeded that of Chaplin's. Britain's Queen Mary named her own cat after the cartoon character. Around the same time, brothers Max and Dave Flesher created popular cartoon characters such as Betty Boop and Popeye the Sailor, who were loved so much that they remain iconic characters today. All of my ones are simple. I know what's on my mind. In 1928, the animation idol of the 20th century, Walt Disney, released his first short cartoons featuring Mickey Mouse, providing the character's voice himself. The first of the series, called Steamboat Willie, was Disney's first talkie, thus ending the silent film era. By the 1930s, in fact, Mickey Mouse became one of the most recognizable symbols of America, declared by the League of Nations to be a symbol of universal goodwill. From 1929 to 1939, Disney produced a popular cartoon series called Silly Symphonies, in which he introduced characters such as Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. His 1932 hit, Flowers and Trees, was actually the first cartoon to ever be produced in Technicolor. Just five years later, in 1937, Walt Disney produced his first full-length animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Though it was expensive to produce and took four years to make, Snow White became an international success and revolutionized animation with its brilliant visual effects. Though Disney received a special Academy Award for his significant screen innovation, his animators working behind the scenes were not as pleased with the film's outcome. Cramming to meet the film's deadline, Disney's artists worked well into the night with the understanding that they'd get bonuses once the film earned back its money. But instead of giving his workers bonuses, Disney put the earnings towards a new studio he wanted built in Burbank. The Screen Cartoonist Guild went on strike against Disney in 1941 for over two months. Finally, then-President Franklin Delano Roosevelt sent White House intervention to settle the issues. 
Though the conflict was rough while it occurred, it set about many positive changes in the animation industry, such as on-screen credit for artist work and doubled wages for a 40-hour work week. In 1964, two years before he died, Disney combined human actors with animation in Mary Poppins, one of his most successful films. Though he transformed animation into the popularly viewed art form it is today, perhaps Walt Disney's biggest contribution to American history was his involvement in World War II. Beginning in 1939, Disney created educational films for the government. In 1942, Lieutenant E.S. Caldwell wrote a letter to the famous animator, asking him to design an emblem to adorn the new Navy torpedo boats called Mosquito Boats. Disney immediately went to work on his design, which depicted a mosquito riding a torpedo. Shortly afterward, he received requests from all branches of the military, asking for Disney character insignias for tanks, minesweepers, bombers, and fighter planes. Together, Disney and his team of five designers made over 1,200 designs. Disney was not the only animator set on boosting morale in soldiers during World War II. Warner Brothers Studios produced racy cartoons specifically to entertain the American soldiers stationed in Europe. Full of expletives and X-rated images, shorts featuring a humorously inept trainee named Private Snafu were written by the famous Ted Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss. Now the military secret that I carry in my brain, I keep in safe deposit with a padlock and chain. Along with Disney, several other major film studios took over the animation industry from the 30s through the 50s. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, otherwise known as MGM, employed animators William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, later known to begin Hanna-Barbera Productions, as they worked on a popular series, Tom and Jerry. Universal Studios animator Walter Lance produced Woody Woodpecker. So, <laughs> trying to get in on your nerve, eh? Well, you're going out on your ear! At Warner Brothers Studios, Tex Avery, Chuck Jones, Bob Clampett, Robert McKimson, and Frizz Frelling directed shorts featuring Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, and Elmer Fudd. Why, what the, why our shop? Uh, why don't it pivot? Whoa. Here, Doc, try the heavy artillery. Hold it, Doc. Just a precaution. In 1945, former Disney artists Zachary Schwartz, David Hilberman, and Stephen Bussusto established United Productions of America, or UPA, breaking away from Disney's emphasis on realism to pursue a bold, flat, modernist style exemplified in the UPA animation Gerald McBoing-Boing, which was dreamt up by Dr. Seuss. Well, when he started talking, you know what he said? He didn't talk words. He went, oink, oink. instead. Oink, oink, oink. UPA popularized a new low-cost style of animation called limited animation, a style in which only certain simple movements of the character are animated, allowing portions of the figure to be re reused. Limited animation then became popular for children's cartoons like The Flintstones, the first animated series to appear on primetime TV. Let's ride with the family down the street, through the courtesy of Fred's boutique. When you're with the Flintstones, have a yabba dabba do time, a dabba do time, we'll have a gay old time. 
During the 1950s, the production of feature-length animations declined because of the rise in popularity of television, but in the 1960s, computer scientists began to experiment with computer visualization and animation. Disney's Tron, released in 1982, was the first feature film to use significant amounts of CGI animation. In 1988, Steven Spielberg joined in production with Walt Disney Studios to make Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which, like Disney's Mary Poppins, combined live actors with animated characters. What a lucky coil. Disney Studios then followed with several popular films, such as Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear that now In 1993, Spielberg returned to the animation scene with his sci-fi film Jurassic Park, which expanded the use of CGI animation. By combining dinosaurs created with CGI animation with actual actors and sets, Spielberg was able to depict realistic dinosaurs, thus proving that computer animation could help filmmakers achieve almost any effect. In 1995, John Lasseter and Pixar Animation Studios produced the all-CGI film Toy Story, which elevated CGI from being just a tool for effects to being a new, unique artistic medium. Oh, okay. Ooh, well, so you want to do it the hard way, huh? Don't even think about it, cowboy. Oh, yeah? Tough guy? <laughs> Despite the new developments in CGI animation, 2D animation remained popular during the 90s and 2000s, especially on TV. Though earlier animation was aimed towards younger audiences, new series like The Simpsons and King of the Hill proved popular with more mature viewers. Oh, he is a fighter pig. Meanwhile, Japanese anime was becoming increasingly popular. Anime uses the limited animation technique, featuring characters that speak moving only their mouths. Another distinct feature of anime is the unique appearance of characters who generally have large eyes. Sorry she turned your parents into pigs, but there's nothing I can do. It's just the way things are. You'll have to help your parents and Aku on your own. Use what you remember about them. In 2001, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences created a new category for feature-length animated films to receive an Academy Award. Since then, animated films have become a truly appreciated and generally adored art form. Yo, you wanna watch that nose, man? <laughs>